in order to know what films to make rather than how to make them, which is the most important question. It's not how do you do it, that's not too difficult. It's what do you do, what films do you tell, make, what stories do you tell, who do you put on screen. In order to make films you've got to try to understand the world, otherwise what stories do you tell? You know, you, so, so how do you understand the world? Well, you've got to read history, you've got to, you've got to engage in the ideas that have shaped the way we are. Why do we live the way we do? Why, why are some people so rich and some people so poor? Why is there exploitation? Why was there imperialism? Why did slaves ha slavery happen? Why, wh who benefited from industrialization? Why are some people homeless and some people in mansions? Why? You need to know why. You need to know the struggles at, for at work in society. You need to know the conflicts. What are the different interests? How do they play out? Who controls the consciousness? I mean, who writes the news? Somebody writes the news. Do, you, do we have any control over the news? No. So who writes it? What are they trying to tell us? Why do they tell this story rather than that story? You know, if you, if you read the Morning Star, for example, which I do from time to time, you will get a whole different set of stories from if you read the Daily Express or the Daily Mail. Which are the more important? Why do you read one story rather than the other? You know, all these questions, you know, big melting pot, beginning with history. And then you can, for me, I don't, you, you, you don't know what stories to tell unless you've got some sense of history. When you make a film, you do reflect the world, whether you want to or not, you do reflect it. Even the most extreme, fantastical film will have some connection to it because the people who make it are born now or live now and their preoccupations will be reflected in their work. Nobody comes from nowhere. <laughs> Everyone comes from somewhere. Everyone has preconceptions that are born from their experience. So you reveal yourself whether you think you are or not. It's usually valuable to do television because you, you know, you, you, you'll, you'll knock up at eight or nine or ten, maybe it's just in a series, you know. You, you learn the process, how to construct a sequence, what to say to actors where to put the camera, you know, how to tell the story. Go straight into doing a film, it's very difficult to do that. I worked in the theatre for, when I left the university for a couple of years, not terribly successfully. We'd got a baby, I needed to earn some money, so I applied to the BBC as an assistant floor manager, which they had the good sense to turn me down on. And then I applied again as a director and they, they took me on. Um, which was quite ironic. And I, I started doing um, police series, I did Z Cars, and then um, was very lucky to get involved in a project called The Wednesday Play, which was contemporary drama. And we tried to make it very contemporary and very um, up to the minute. And we just found that the old format of, of making drama, like theater, in electronic studios, was very cumbersome. It didn't, we wanted to be on the streets. So with a kind of mixture of ignoring the bureaucracy and breaking the rules, we used the four days that they gave you to film people drawing up in a car and getting out and going into a room, which was a set. We used those four days to shoot half a film, which was up the junction, and then uh, managed to make it like a film. And after a big bureaucratic row, they allowed us to make another film, and the next film was Cathy Come Home. I, I think the problem now is for, for young filmmakers is that the, it's getting the commissions. I mean, when we did Cathy Come Home, nobody saw the film till it was finished. And then they cast an eye on it and um, gave it the approval and out it went. So for people to, to learn through television, television's got hierarchy, has got to take a step back, give the writers freedom, producers' freedom to bring a team together, directors' freedom to direct, then you'll get original work. At the moment, you get commodities. Join a trade union. You can't be a filmmaker unless you join a trade union because trade unions are a collective strength. Um, as individuals, we're, we're nothing. And it, trade unions also defend standards. Generations of people working in films have worked hard to provide a decent working conditions and they're under attack, have been for 
several decades, we, we, you won't get good conditions for making films unless the union is strong. The union isn't strong unless you join it, so join it. Know which side you're on, because the world's a um, difficult, dark place with a lot of dark things happening, exploitative things happening, criminal things happening. So try to understand that and choose which side you're on. Work with good professionals. I mean, again, I learned from working with good cameramen, brilliant cameraman called Chris Mengis. Rebecca Brown, the producer, um, Paul Laverty, the writer, and I, we've, we've worked together. I've worked with Rebecca for nearly 30 years and for Paul for, for a quarter of a century. And Rebecca's very good at her job and, and enables the film to be made, of, of put in a, a financial framework and, a, and a, an organisational framework. Paul is, is a constant source of ideas and energy and brilliance in writing. And we're drawn to the same subjects. And I think if, if, you, don't, if you don't share the same sense of humour and the same sense of what's important and the same political ideas, then I think you, you might do one film together, but you wouldn't do more than that. The whole process is, is absolutely brilliant. Um, starting with um, working with a writer, and shaping it with the writer, but allowing the writer to write. You know, don't interfere too much. That, that's brilliant. And I think one thing that people mistake is writing and directing are not the same. They're in a way they're quite opposite crafts. And um, I think the modern heresy that in order to be a film director you've got to write your own script is absolutely wrong. I think you you benefit from working with the writer, and uh, the ability to write a line of few lines of dialogue and then uh, people to spring off the page as real people, you know, that, that's a rare talent and not many people have got it and directing a film is not that, it's not that talent so work with a good writer or if you're a writer find a director. The, the most enjoyable at a, at a, just in terms of, of the day is editing because it's a good job for the winter because you can get in there, you can get a, a good cup of coffee, you know, find, find a good coffee place nearby and get a good double espresso at 10 o'clock, that's pretty essential. And you can knock off at 5.30, you see, so that, that's good. Um, so that's very enjoyable. You can listen to the cricket if it's on. You, you are shaping the story and bringing it together, but you're also catching up on the scores. <laughs> Then going around to like presenting it is quite interesting. I mean, you, you, you'll see all the faults you've made, but I think it's important to be able to talk about it. Because if, if the ideas are strong enough, the ideas have got to be strong enough to get you to make it in the first place. You've got to feel you have to make it. So then you've got ideas to defend. So it's all, it's all good fun. <laughs>